Hello. Well, I had been doing a series of videos on games that uh, I own but I've only played once. But I'm going to interrupt that this Christmas season to uh, do some videos on games that I got for Christmas this year. So even though it's not quite Christmas yet, that's still a couple days away, I did get this game from my BGG Secret Santa. And uh, so I've gone ahead and played one one game of it and I thought I'd do a video although I know it's a newer game so there's already lots of videos out on it but I'm gonna do one anyway so let's I'll get on with the uh, setup and how to play so the first thing you'll do is assign the factions I'm gonna play a four player game so that since that seems to be the best uh, faction combination there is in this uh, Learn to play guide um, on page 22. There's a thing that shows the best faction combinations for two players, three players, and four players. But I'm going to be playing with four players, so I'll be playing with all the factions. And those factions are the Marquis de Cat, the Erie Dynasties, the Woodland Alliance, and the Vagabond. So each player will take a faction and then you just randomly determine the starting player and seating order. I'm going to do it uh, in the order I just showed the different factions. Right, next you'll place each faction score marker on the zero space of the scoring track. You'll shuffle the shared deck of cards and deal each player three cards. I'll go ahead and do that. Alright, I've dealt each player a hand of three cards. And normally we'll keep these uh, uh, face down or so your opponents can't see them. While I'm playing, I will probably, since I'm playing solo, I'll probably turn them all face up just so it's easier for me to see what my players have. Then you'll place these four uh, ruin markers on the different spots on the board that have the R there for ruin. So I've got one there, 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 and there. And of course, um, you know, I put the board in the central area. I'm playing with the fall side of the board. The board is two sided, the other side is a winter side and is a more advanced side. Okay, then you'll place these items up here at the top of the board. There are icons to show which items go where. So you'll place all 12 of these starting items up here. Each faction has an overview card that kind of tells about the faction and what they try to do to win. And uh, so you can deal out an overview card of each faction to each player. So um, there's four of each, so each player can see what their story and strategy is and those of their opponents. And then you'll just place the two dice that come with the game somewhere near all players. Alright, then each faction can look at the back of their player board and it shows what components they need to gather, so for the Marquis de Cat, you get your 25 warriors, your six sawmills, workshops, and recruiters. We got those there. Your eight wood and your keep. Put them there. And no other pieces. And then kind of tells you what you do to set up here. So I'll go over this for uh, this player and then I'll just set up the other players. But okay, so for this one it says. <clears throat> Place your keep token in a corner clearing of your choice. So this is the keep token. You can put it in any of the corner clearings. So I'm going to put it in that one. And it says place one warrior in each clearing except the corner clearing diagonally opposite from the keep. So since my keep is here, I'll put a warrior in every other clearing except for the one diagonally opposite which is this one. 
which shouldn't be here yet but anyway so that will be 11 warriors let me get those put out all right the Marquise de Cat has placed his warriors in all clearings except for the one directly opposite his keep all right then place one sawmill workshop and recruiter among the clearing with the keep token and any adjacent ones three buildings in total okay so I placed the sawmill buildings go in these squares that are in the uh, clearing so there's only one in this clearing I placed the sawmill then the other two have to go in adjacent clearings clearings are adjacent if they follow a path so I put put the recruiter in this space and I place the workshop in this space and then it says flip your board and fill your building tracks with sawmills, workshops, and recruiters except for the leftmost space of each track. So I'll flip the board over and those go here. So this is for sawmills. So you put one on each space. Uh, like so. And I'll do that for the rest of them. Okay, I got the recruiters, workshop, and sawmills all set up on their tracks, and that is set up for the Marquise de Cat. So now we move on to the Erie Dynasties. So, first you form a supply of your 20 warriors, then you place a roost, which is one of these tokens, and six of your warriors in the clearing opp directly opposite the keep of the Marquise de Cat. If you're not playing with the uh, cat character, then you can choose any corner clearing. So let me just put six in here. Okay, I got six of the birds in the eerie area. Alright, then you'll choose one of the four. Uh, eerie leader cards as your starting leader um, and place it in the leader card slot and then you just keep the others uh, face up somewhere in your play area and the leaders each have a, a special power um, or something written down here and then they'll tell you where your um, loyal viziers your two loyal viziers will start on your decree which is the next step so the leader I chose um, shows move and build for my loyal viziers so you'll just tuck one under the move and one under the build those, those are my extra leaders And then you just place your six remaining roost tokens on the track as shown. Alright, next is the Woodland Alliance. So you'll just gather your ten warriors near you. You'll place your three base spaces on the spots that match, you know, mouse, rabbit, fox. Put them on your faction board. And you place your 10 sympathy tokens on your uh, sympathy track. And finally you'll draw three cards and put them here on your supporters space. That's one, two, three. And that's all set up for the Woodland Alliance. Alright, next is the Vagabond. So you'll choose one of the uh, vagabond characters and uh, and you'll put that on your character card spot so uh, each one has different starting items and a different uh, kind of little power so we'll just say we're gonna start with uh, the thief character card and then these are just not used. All 
Then you'll place your vagabond pond, or pond, not pond, pond in any forest. Forests are these spaces with trees that are in between clearings. So we'll just start him right here. Okay, this is the quest deck for the vagabond. So you'll shuffle the quest deck and draw three quest cards and just place them face up in your play area. Okay, then you'll take these four items that have the R on them and you'll take a ruin from the board and cover each one and then you will shuffle them up and put them back in the ruined spots kind of so you don't know which one is where so I'm gonna do that and I'll come back okay so I've got those ruin markers placed back in their positions with an item underneath them and I don't know which item is underneath which ruin okay and then as I mentioned you look at the starting items for the character card you drew and choose that choose those from the starting items that uh, have an, all these items with an S are starting items so I need a boot a torch a teapot and a sword because those are the starting items listed there on my card now you'll put them in your satchel here face up except for if you use a teapot you put it on its track here if one of your starting items was this stack of coins you would put it here and if one of your items was the bag you would put it here but all other items go face up in your satchel and finally you'll take a uh, icon for each of the other factions or a token for each of the other factions and put them in the indifferent spot here on your relationships track and that's it we're set up for playing with the four different factions and we are ready to go alright so we're ready to play this one's a little tricky as it's a asymmetric faction so each faction plays completely differently than the other faction but each faction does have a bird song daylight and evening phase and the good thing about these player boards as they kind of give you um, exactly what you can do on your turn now they don't give you all the details but we'll go into that so um, we'll have to go through each faction individually and just talk about what they do on their turn then when we finish that we'll do a couple of example turns so first for the Marquise de Cat uh, they have two powers here. The keep, which you remember we placed in this clearing up here. Um, they're the only one that can place pieces in the clearing with the keep. Now other players can move pieces in there, but they can't place them in there. So there's a difference there. The Marquise de Cat also has the field hospital ability. Whenever any of their warriors are removed, um, they can spend a card matching the clearing so um, or to place those warriors in the clearing with the keep. So we should kind of talk about you know, how you play a card matching a clearing. Each clearing, and you can tell by the little symbol here or the color of the trees, so the yellow is rabbit, the dark orange or red is fox, um, Let's see, the orange, the lighter orange is mouse. So, any, any of these shared cards you have also have a suit at the top, so that's rabbit. There's also bird, which is this symbol, and that's wild. It can be used for any of the other three suits, uh, fox, rabbit, or um, mouse. 
So, for example, for this field hospital ability, if there was a battle took place here in this uh, rabbit clearing and the Marquise de Cat lost a couple, some warriors, he could discard a card with the, um, or play a card with the rabbit suit and um, use this field hospital ability because that matches the clearing that the battle took place in and instead of losing his warriors he can put them up here where his keep is. Alright well let's talk about the first thing the Marquise de Cat does on his turn is he places one wood at each sawmill. So he's got these wood tokens and these are the sawmills here. Now here at the beginning of the game he just has one so he would put one wood there. But later if he puts out more uh, sawmills by building them then he would put one at each sawmill he has on the board. Okay well next in daylight the first thing he can do is craft. Now each faction crafts different, differently but you can see that uh, the Marquise de Cat crafts using workshops which is these buildings here. So for crafting you can look at your cards and look at the bottom of them and that shows you what you can craft. So for instance this card has a mouse, one mouse symbol. So if the Marquise de Cat had a workshop in a mouse clearing which he doesn't right now his workshop is the rabbit clearing but if he had a workshop in a mouse clearing then he could craft this item and what that would get him is a teapot item which he would take from up here at the top of the board now if if what you're trying to craft has already been taken from the top of the board then you can't craft it but if he did craft it he would take that teapot put it here in his crafted items and then he would also score two points and then he would discard this card now to craft this item he would need a workshop in two different rabbit clearings. So he does have a workshop in one rabbit clearing right now, but he doesn't have a workshop in another rabbit clearing, so he would not be able to craft this. And this symbol here um, shows four kind of wild cards, so it can be any clearing, but he would have to have four wor workshops in any clearings, and then he could craft this. Now this you don't get an item it's a card you put in play and then you would have this power so in birdsong you could discard this to score one point per clearing you rule so uh, we need to probably talk about rule so you would understand what that means you rule a clearing if you have more warriors and buildings than anybody else in the clearing so in this case you know, the Marquise de Cat has one war warrior, so he rules this building. Now, tokens such as, you know, a wood token or um, a sympathy token, th those don't count toward ruling the clearing. But if, uh, say, if, you know, the bird had two birds in here and the cat just had one uh, warrior in here, um, then the bird rules the clearing. But your your buildings also contribute to that. So here, the count of the Marquise de Cat, because he's got one building and one warrior, um, if somebody else only had one warrior in there, then the cat, the Marquise de Cat, would still rule that clearing because he has more pieces in there. Now the Erie dynasty does have this power, they rule any clearings where they're tied for presence. So if they tie with any other faction um, for warriors and buildings, um, total presence in there, then, then they rule it. So again, on the Marquise de Cat, the first thing he can do is craft using his workshops if he wants to craft anything on the bottom of his cards. That's optional. You don't have to do it, and sometimes you can't do it. Okay, then the Marquise de Cat, he can take up to three actions, 
and he can take additional actions for each bird card he spins. So if he took three actions and wanted to take one more action, he could discard this bird card that he had in his hand to take another action. So what are the actions you can, he can take? Well, let's start with battle. What is, how does that work? Well, let's set up a little example here. You can battle where you have um, warriors or um, in case of the vagabond where his pawn is. His pawn doesn't normally count as a warrior, but he can battle with his pawn. But the other people, all the other factions, you can battle if you have warriors there. So if you initiate the battle, if you do a battle action on your turn, then you are the attacker and the opponent you're battling is the defender. Now, the defender does have an option to play an ambush card on you if they have one in their hand. And if the, den if the defender has an ambush card that matches the clearing the battle is taking in, so the suit of the ambush card, like in this case, had the suit of a mouse, then they could play that and they can do two hits to you immediately before the rest of the battle. But if you happen to have an ambush card that uh, also has the suit of the clearing, you can play that to foil their ambush card and then both ambush cards are just discarded. And in this case, if the defender, the, the eerie bird, had played an ambush card and done two hits to the Marquise de Cat, he would have removed these two warriors and the battle would just end immediately. So if you play an ambush and are successful and it removes any of the attacking warriors, um, then the, that just ends the battle. But in this case, you know, say nobody had an ambush card, we just go on with the battle. So you'll roll these two dice and the attacker gets the higher roll and the defender gets the lower roll. And then each side will remove that number of units. So, um, but you, you can't um, force somebody to remove more units than you have in the battle. So in this instance, the Marquise de Cat is the attacker. Since he gets the higher roll, he gets the three, but he's only got two warriors so he can only force the um, opponent to remove two units. Now, it just so happens that you, the opponent only has one unit, so he would have to remove it. Um, and then, of course, in this bad luck instance for the Erie, he rolled a zero, so the Marquise de Cat would not have to re remove any units. Now, the Woodland Al Alliance does have a power where uh, guerrilla war in a battle as the defender they use the higher roll and the attacker uses the lower roll. But they're the only ones with that power. Everyone else, the Erie, the Vagabond, and the Marquise de Cat, the attacker uses the high roll and the defender uses the low roll. And there could be some powers from cards that allow extra hits and so forth, but the basics of the battle is as I've shown it now. If the battle was such that, we'll say, the Erie was attacking the Marquise de Cat, and he's the attacker. So if this was the case, and uh, we rolled this 3-0, um, and the, the Erie was the attacker, well, then they would do three damage. Well, there's only one um, warrior to remove. But then there's a building which can be removed for your second hit. And if there was another building for your third hit, you could remove that building. And every time you remove an opponent's building, you score a victory point. And if your building is removed, like if this Marquis uh, building was removed, then you just put it back on the leftmost space on the track. And if the, uh, say the Erie was attacking this clearing, and there's no warriors in it, so it's defenseless, then the Eerie, the attacker scores an extra hit. So in this case, say, you know, three and two, well, he would score actually score four hits because he scores an extra hit. Now there's only one building there to remove. And of course the defender rolled a two, but he wouldn't get to score any hits because he's got no warriors there and you can't 
put more hits than the number of warriors you have. And you just do one round of battle, so if there's enemies remaining, um, you would just have to take another action to battle again. Again, the Marquise only gets three actions during the daylight. So one action is battle, we've gone over that. His next action he can do is march, and he gets to take two moves with a march. So when you move, you have to move either from a clearing that you rule or to a clearing that you rule. And when you move, you just move one clearing along a path. Now, his, the Marquis' power is, um, for if he does a march action, he can take two moves. So he could move the same unit twice, you know, and actually go two spaces, or he could move two different units or warriors. Um, but anyway, he can, for a march, he can take two moves. Now, again, remember, I said to move, um, you have to move either from a clearing that you rule or move to a clearing that you rule. So if uh, if the Erie had um, two of their warriors in here, well, then they rule this this clearing because they have more um, pieces in there. So they they rule it, but the Marquise de Cat could still move this piece because he could move to one of these clearings, which he rules. Now, if the Erie or another faction ruled both of these um, clearings also, then this piece would not be able to move. All right, another action he can do is recruit. Once per turn, place one warrior at each recruiter. Now remember, recruiter is one of the buildings he can build, and at the start of the game, he's got one. So if he takes the recruit action, he can only do it once per turn, but he can put one warrior at um, his recruiter. Now, if he builds more recruiters um, later, later on, then he gets to put one warrior at each recruiter. Okay, next is the build action. In a clearing you rule, place a building, spending its cost in wood. This is the wood cost, so the first time you build one of these, it just costs one wood, the next time two wood, and so forth. But you'll get victory points. Um, as you, So if you build this, you get one victory point. If you build this, you get two victory points. But to build, you've got to spend its cost in wood connected through any number of clearings you rule. So remember the first thing you do um, as the cat is you can place one wood at your sawmill. So at the beginning of the game he's got the one sawmill so he's placed one wood. So he would only be able to build one of these one wood items. So let's say he wants to build another sawmill. So he would take this and it has to be in a clearing that you rule. So of course right here at the beginning of the game he rules several. So he could build it here in this space because he rules this clearing. He's the only one with pieces in there. And then he's got to pay the one wood cost. Well, the wood you're going to use has to be available from the uh, clearing where you're building. There, all clearings between the wood you're going to use and the clearing that you're going to build, you have to rule. So in this case, that's easy. He rules this. You would just discard this piece of wood and then you could build that building. Um, however, in the future, if maybe he wanted to build <clears throat> a sawmill here, but he can't trace and his wood was still back there, he couldn't trace through here because he doesn't rule this. The I re rules it. Um, you can't trace along the river anyway. He could probably trace along this route and get it. But the other faction may try to block off your access to to wood um, so that you can't trace a route to the wood you're going to use from the clearing you're going to build in and uh, they're, they're thereby blocking you from building. But that is the main way the Marquis uh, faction 
um, gets their victory points is by building. And the higher up you build, the more victory points you get. And the last action they have that they can take during the daylight is the overwork, where you can spend a card to place one wood at a sawmill in a matching clearing. So if he wanted to place a wood in this clearing with the overwork action, he would have to be able to spend a card with the fox icon, which he doesn't have, so he wouldn't be able to do that overwork action. But if you did have a card that matched a clearing where you have a sawmill, you could take that action to place a wood there. And then finally, he, after he's taken his three actions or more, if he plays a bird card to take another action, he does the evening phase where he draws one card from the shared deck to his hand, and then plus one card for each symbol of this showing now. As he builds these buildings and takes these tokens and puts them on the board, then he may get some of these symbols, which allow him to draw another card. So originally you just draw one card to your hand, but if he had built these two recruiter buildings um, and he had this revealed, then when he got to the evening phase, he would actually draw two cards. And you have a maximum of five cards, so he would discard um, which cards he wanted if he had more than five. And that's it for the Marquise de Cat, so let's go on to the Erie. And just in case I did not mention it, you can take these actions in any order you wish, or and you can do the same action more than once except for the Recruit. That's the only one you can do um, only once per turn. Alright, the rest of these factions shouldn't take quite as long to go over since we've already explained a lot of the basics. So, first thing with the Eerie, as we've talked about, they rule any clearings where they're tied in presence. And then they have this disdain for trade. So, we talked about when crafting items um, that you score some points. So, like we, uh, the Marquise de Cat, we showed where if they craft this, they get two victory points. Well, because of the Eerie's disdain for trade, um, they only score one victory point, even if they had this one that would score two. All right, so the first thing they do in the bird song is if your hand is empty, you draw a card. Um, but, of course, at the beginning of the game, their hand is not empty. They have three cards. Then the next thing you do is add one or two cards to the decree. Only one of the added cards may be a bird card. So the decree is up here, and you'll remember when we set them up, we set one of their loyal viziers in the move and one of their loyal viziers in the build. So um, during the decree, the uh, eerie turn, they have to do the all these actions where they have a card so anyway in the second step um, you have to add at least one card you can add two cards but only one can be a uh, a bird card and you can add your card to a spot that has no card or you can add another one to a spot where there is a card and if you add another one to a spot where there's already a card that just means you'll do that same action you know, more than once, depending on how many cards are there. So their third thing in bird song is if you have no roosts, and remember roosts are their buildings in the clearings that uh, they put out. So if they have no roosts, you can place a roost and three warriors in a clearing with the fewest warriors. But you do start the game with one roost. Alright, next they go to daylight where they can craft using roosts. Whereas the uh, Marquise de Cat crafted using their workshops out on the board. The uh, Erie Dynasty crafts with the roosts they have in clearings on the board. And they craft in the same way. So this is their hand, so if they wanted to craft um, you know, this 
root t, which was kind of similar to the same one that they had. Well, we can look at a different example. If they wanted to craft this sword, they would have to have a roost in two fox clearings to craft that. So currently, they only have a roost in a bunny clearing or rabbit clearing. But uh, if they, in the future, have a roost in you know a fox clearing here and maybe a fox clearing here, then they would have roosts in two fox clearings. So during the crafting phase, they could craft this sword, put it in their crafted items box, and score only one point instead of two because of their disdain for trade. Now, remember, we started with uh, this leader, um, but there actually is one of their leaders that can come into play that... Uh, does away with that oh yeah this one ignore the disdain for trade when you craft so if he's if he's your active leader then you would get the uh, full amount of victory points okay finally the second thing you do in the daylight is resolve the decree from left to right taking one action per card in the matching clearing so if you had a card in the recruit section then you would recruit you know one of your warriors in a matching clearing with a roost so if um, just as an example if we had placed this card in the recruit section when we had done the uh, action to add one or two cards to the decree well the first thing we do is recruit one of our warriors in a rabbit clearing so we actually have a rabbit clearing with a roost so we could we would put one of our warriors there and if you had two cards there um, you know like this then you would recruit one uh, warrior in a fox clearing with a roost and one clear warrior in a rabbit clearing with a roost so next you go to the next one in the decree and move from a matching clearing so matching whatever the card suit is so um, the loyal vizier is a bird card so that is um, that's wild so you could move from any roost but even though it says move you still have to follow the rules we talked about moving earlier um, where you can only move from from a clearing that you rule or to a clearing that you rule so in this case we have one card here we would have to move at least one warrior from a clearing so you know we could move this guy because we rule this clearing we could move this guy here and then actually now we would rule this clearing because the eerie um, rules where they're tied for presence but again if we had another card here you know like this mouse card then we would have to move one warrior from a mouse clearing and then one warrior from any clearing we want since the bird is a wild card all right next if we had a card in the battle section we would have to have a battle and a clearing matching the suit of the card there and finally um, in the build section we would uh, build a roost in a matching clearing you rule without a roost so um, whatever card you have there whatever suit it is you would have to uh, rule a clearing without a roost and then build a roost there and when you build a roost you take it off um, your track here and place it in the clearing and then that will score your point score you points here in a second now there's a catch for the Erie if you ever cannot take one of the actions on um, your decree for whatever reason you don't have warriors in a clearing if you had a card here um, like a mouse card and you didn't have warriors in a mouse clearing that could battle you know another uh, faction and you couldn't do that or since you do have a card here if you didn't rule a clearing matching the card um, where you could place a roost and you couldn't do it 
So in any case, if you can never, if you can't activate one of your cards for one reason or another, then you have to go through this turmoil. So the first thing you do is lose one victory point per bird card, including the viziers in the decree. So in this case, it would just be two victory points. Then you discard all the cards in the decree that you've got placed in the decree, except for the viziers. Then you flip your current leader card over and you have to assign one of the unused leaders as your new leader. And then you um, reassign the viziers as we talked about. The new leader will tell you where to put your viziers, like move in battle. So if you took this guy, you'd still leave one vizier and move, but you'd put another one in the battle and you wouldn't have this one in the build. And then... Um, Finally, immediately in the daylight and go to the evening. And here's where they score. In the evening, score victory points um, of the rightmost empty space on the roost track. So, of course, right now you wouldn't score any, but as you push, put these roosts out, then you would score more and more points every turn at, at the evening phase. And then you draw one card plus one card for each of those symbols showing and you just saw where once you've placed uh, your second roost down which well actually your third roost then you would have that symbol showing so you would draw two cards at the evening phase and again just like the Marquise de Cat you discard um, when you have more than five cards you have to discard down to five and that's it for the Erie, so now we move on to the Woodland Alliance. So the Woodland Alliance has a couple of powers. This first one is Outrage. <clears throat> when a player removes a Sympathy, which is one of these tokens that you'll end up putting out on the board, or moves any warrior into a Sympathetic Clearing, and that will be a clearing with one of these Sympathy tokens on it, which we'll talk about how they get there shortly then that player must add a matching card from their hand to the supporter. So if you had a sympathy token in this clearing and a player, the Marquise de Cat, moved a warrior in there, then he would have to add from his hand um, a fox card, uh, a card with a fox suit into your supporter stack. If he doesn't have one, then... Um, he has to show you his hand, showing that he doesn't have one, and then you draw one uh, card from the deck and place it on your supporter stack. And their other power we've already talked about in uh, battle as the defender, they actually use the higher dice and the attacker uses the lower dice, which is opposite of most battles. Now, if, if uh, they're attacker, then it's the same. They use the higher dice and the defender uses the lower dice. So... In any battle they're in, they always, whether they're the attacker or the defender, they always use the higher role. Okay, well the first option they have in the birdsong phase is this revolt. So they can spend two supporters matching a sympathetic clearing. Now, remember, sympathetic clearing is where they have a sympathy token. So, for instance, this uh, clearing is a fox clearing and it's sympathetic so they can spend two of their supporters that's the cards in this stack if they have two uh, fox foxes which they don't so they couldn't uh, they couldn't do a revolt in that clearing but more cards will get added here and they'll end up having sympathy in more clearings but if they do have uh, two matching supporters for a sympathetic clearing then they can remo remove all enemy pieces there so if they did have two fox cards um, they could remove that warrior and of course they have to spend those supporters so they have to discard them if they use them for this revolt and then uh, they remove all enemy pieces there and that's not just warriors if they had a building there then you would remove that also and um, that would any as I said earlier if you ever remove a uh, enemy building you score a victory point for each building or roost that you remove then you can place a matching base and a warrior there equal to the total number of matching sympathetic clearings and then place a warrior in the officer officers box so the bases um, 
they have three bases, a fox, a rabbit, and a mouse. So you couldn't revolt if you already had a, uh, you know, your fox base out, then you couldn't revolt in a uh, fox clearing because your, your fox base would already be placed. Okay, the next thing that they can do in the bird song is spread sympathy. So they can spend a number of supporters, remember that's those cards, uh, listed on a sympathy track to place a sympathy adjacent to a sympathetic clearing if possible. Supporters must match the target clearing. So if, you know, we already had a sympathy here, sympathetic token here, well, you can see the first three you place cost one supporter to put out. The next three, next three that you place will cost you two matching supporters. And the final four to place will cost you three supporters. So since I have one sympathy here, and I want to spread a sympathy to an adjacent clearing, well, for this one I would have to have one rabbit supporter, and then I would um, discard that rabbit supporter, and I could take the next uh, sympathy token and place it on the board, and that would score me a victory point. Or if I wanted to um, spread and place a sympathy here, then of course I would have to have one mouse supporter. Now again, that's early on as I get further up, I would have to have two mouse supporters or three mouse supporters. But you start earning more victory points um, the higher up you go. And both of those steps are optional. So then you come to daylight. And it says you may take these actions any number of times. So you can craft, and that's the um, same thing we've talked about, um, crafting with the other factions, only you use your sympathy tokens. So if you wanted to craft, you know, this bag, you would have to have one sympathy token in a mouse clearing. And if you do, then you would craft that bag, and you would take it from up there, Put it in your crafted items and score one victory point. So you can craft, you know, as many things as you as you want if you can. Then the next thing that's possible is you can add a card from your hand to your supporters track. So since you need those supporters to spread sympathy or revolt, it's a good idea to add cards from your hand into your supporter stack and again you can do that as many times as you want on your turn for and then finally you can train spend a card from your hand matching a built base to place a warrior in the off officer's box so if you have one of these bases if you did a revolt and ended up placing one of these bases on the board then you can spend a, a card from your hand that matches it or of course or a wild card and that allows you to place a warrior in the officer's box which is right here now the woodland alliance only has 10 warriors so um, as as you place your warriors on the board you have fewer you can put in the officer's box or as you put more in the officer's box you have fewer you can place on the board so they don't have near as many warriors as the Erie and the Marquise de Cat. Well, what good are these officers, you ask? Well, that comes in the evening phase. So you can take these operations up to your number of officers. So if you have one officer, then you could only do one of these things. Move, which we talk, it's the same rules for moving. You can move from, with one of your warriors, from a clearing that you rule. Um, or to a clearing that you rule. You can recruit. So if you have a base out, you can, and you have uh, one officer, you could do, you know, a recruit and place one of your warriors where you have a base. If you have two officers here, you can take two of these actions or the same action twice. So the more officers you have here, the more of these actions you can take. Um, of course, battle we've talked about. And one we haven't talked about is organize. So for that one, you can remove a warrior that you have on the map and place a sympathy token here, there. So, you know, if I had a warrior here, then I could 
do organize action, remove it, and place a sympathy. And of course, that is how the uh, Woodland Alliance gets most of their uh, victory points is by placing sympathy. And by placing it that way, then you don't have to discard you know, the supporters like you have to do when you're doing the spread sympathy. So that's a kind of a cheaper way of um, getting sympathy out there. And then finally, you draw one card um, from the shared deck, plus one card for each symbol showing, which those will appear as you place sympathy out. You'll, those uh, symbols will be on your track. Actually, they're not on the sympathy, they're under the base. As you place the bases, then you get to draw extra cards. And then there's just a couple little rules down here. Each clearing can only have one sympathy token. And um, if a clearing has more than th three or more enemy warriors in it, then you have to spend, when you're spreading sympathy, then you have to spend an additional supporter card. So instead of like two cards to place this one, it, you'd have to spend three cards if it has at least three warriors in there. All right, that pretty much covers all the actions for the Woodland Alliance. So let's go to the final uh, faction, the Vagabond. All right, well, the first thing is this rule for the Vagabond. Um, he can move regardless of who rules a clearing. So the Vagabond never rules a clearing, but he can move uh, whether somebody else rules it or not, since he can never rule one. And then he has this. Uh, his pawn is not a warrior and cannot be removed from the map. If an enemy effect says that it removes all enemy pieces from your clearing, you damage three of your items. And your items are those that are in your satchel or what are over here. All right, well, the first thing the Vagabond does during Birdsong is ref refresh three items plus two more for each teapot um, that he has here. So in this case, he would be able to refresh five items. Well, he's only got, you know, three items right here um, in his satchel. But uh, as he uses these, which we'll get to in a minute, he'll flip them over. And then they stay flipped over and they can't be used again. Well, here at the beginning of Birdsong, you refresh them by flipping them back over. All right, the next thing he can do is slip. He may move to a clearing or forest at no cost. So that's kind of a free move he can do. And... Um, he can move from a forest into a clearing, of, or if he's in a clearing, he could move to a forest, or if he's in a clearing, he can move to another clearing. Now, the Vagabond is the only one that can move into the forest. All the other people, um, factions, can only move along the paths to, from clearing to clearing. But um, the Vagabond with a slip, he can move into a forest if he wants to. Now, when, later on, when he is doing a regular move he can only move along uh, paths okay so next we get to the daylight and this is where he can actually spend his items to do these actions so if he wants to move um, and not into a force he can spend one boot so he could exhaust this uh, boot and then he could move you know, to a clearing if he was in a forest, or if he's in a clearing, then he can just move to another clearing. Um, with move action, he can't move into the forest. He can move out of it. But um, he could not take another move action right now because he only has the one boot. But later he can acquire more to take more move actions. Okay, next thing he could do, or another thing he could do, is he could exhaust this torch to explore. And he does that. If he's in one of these clearings with a ruin, and remember we put an item under each of those ruins at the beginning of the game. So, if he's in a clearing with a ruin, he can uh, exhaust his torch, and then he can take the item from under that ruin and put it in his satchel face up when he acquires it it goes face up 
and then he scores a victory point. Okay, the next thing he can do is aid. So give a card matching your clearing to a player there. You may take an item from them. So we've talked about uh, before all these other players can craft items and we said we that they get them from up here. But really, other than scoring the victory points um, for crafting, those items that they're in cra their crafted items box don't do them any good, except that the Vagabond wants those items to allow him to take more actions. So that's where this aid action comes in. If he's, like if the Marquise de Cat had crafted an item, maybe another boot, and the Vagabond takes the aid action here, he can give them from his hand a fox card and then take that crafted item and then he can place that in his satchel and then he can that improves his relationship he can move up it costs one it, if you aid with one card um, the first time and it improves your relationship with whoever you aid and you can slide that marker up and that scores him a victory point now, to score again with aiding, the next time he aids the Marquise de Cat, he would have to give him two cards. Now, he, he doesn't necessarily have to have um, two items. Um, you could still aid him by giving him the two cards just so that you can go up on the uh, relationship track and score another two points. Okay. Um, the next thing the Vagabond can do is claim a quest. So you remember at the beginning of the game he drew three quest cards. So this one, if the Vagabond is in a rabbit clearing and he can exhaust a torch and a teapot, which you can't exhaust um, items that are up here, but if you do then you move them down into your satchel. If you ever refresh it then you can always move it back to this track. But <clears throat> So if he was in a rabbit clearing and he wanted to do a quest, he could exhaust his torch and a teapot, and then he could claim one of two rewards. He could draw two cards from the shared deck, or he could claim one victory point per quest that he's completed, including this one that matches the rabbit clearing. So if this was his first quest, then he would just score one victory point. But then he would put this completed quest somewhere in his play area. And, um, you know, say the next quest he does, he completes is this one. Well, he would score, if he chose this option, he would score one victory point per completed red quest. Well, he's only completed a rabbit quest. Um, and since this is for a fox quest, he would still only score one victory point. But the next time he completed another rabbit quest, you know, he'd score one victory point per completed rabbit quest. So he would score one point for this one plus the other one he's completed. And every time you complete a quest and you put a put your card in your completed quest box, you get to draw a new quest. So you always have three quests that you can do. All right, the next thing that the Vagabond can do is if he has a, uh, a refreshed crossbow item, he can remove a piece in his clearing, Warriors first. So he could, if he used the strike, he could remove this Warrior. If he happened to be in a clearing that just had a building, he could re use his strike, um, exhaust his crossbow, and then remove that um, recruit building and score a point or you can also um, remove a supporter token if you wish but you always have to remove warriors first then a buildings after that okay another thing he can do is repair or craft if he has a hammer you know currently he does not but uh, if he did <clears throat> then he can craft just like everybody else so if the Vagabond was in a rabbit clearing and he had two hammers, he could exhaust both those hammers because it requires two um, rabbits. Well, 
the vagabonds hammers uh, match the clearing he's in so he would have to be in a rabbit clearing be able to exhaust two hammers and then he could craft this now this is one of those cards that you just put in your play area and you have this power it's not a card that you know gives you an item but you know he has this one so if he was in a rabbit clearing and he could exhaust two hammers then he could craft a stack of coins and get three victory points or instead of for crafting he can use um, a hammer to repair items now when the uh, vagabond <clears throat> is in a battle um, instead of since he's not a warrior and can't be removed from the map when he takes hits he damages items and then they can't be used until they're repaired so one way he can repair them is using hammers to repair damaged items and when you uh, repair a damaged item you just move it back into the satchel and then of course the last thing he can do in daylight is battle so if he had a sword he could exhaust that to battle someone and then um, he rolls the dice just like everyone else but his max number of hits is equal to his undamaged swords that he has now it can still be exhausted so like if he spent this one uh, to battle even though it's exhausted it's not damaged so he could still do a maximum of one hit now if he gets more swords later on then if, if he rolled a three and he had three undamaged swords then he could do three hits but whenever he's hit instead of taking damage as I talked about a while ago like if he takes two hits well then he has to move two items down into the damage box so the vagabonds main way of scoring victory points is quests aiding other players and uh, exploring the four ruins and then of course crafting now of course the character that we chose to start with is the thief so he has a power where he can exhaust a torch to take a random card from a player in his clearing all right so then we go to the evening so first thing in the evening is if he's in a forest he can repair all items so if you have a lot of damaged items and you know you need to repair them and you don't have a lot of hammers the best thing to do is use your slip to move into a forest um, during the bird song and then when you get to the evening phase uh, you'll be able to repair all your damaged items okay then you can draw one card plus one uh, card per coin stack you have so you want to acquire the stacks of coins to uh, that you can place here so that you can draw more than one card every turn Finally, of course, discard, discard down to five cards. And then you have to remove items from your satchel uh, down to six. But for every bag item you have here, you can keep an additional two. So you, you want to get more bags here because you will, over the game, get more than six items. And you don't want to have to discard items that you've uh, worked hard to acquire. So you hope uh, you can craft a bag or somebody else will craft a bag um, or you find one in a ruin so you can add them here now items that you have on these tracks the teapots the coins or the uh, bags you can use them um, for doing you know something else if something requires one and I talked about this earlier you can exhaust it but when you exhaust it you move it over here exhaust it into the satchel and then it no longer longer counts for these bonuses but whenever you uh, refresh them then you can move them immediately back to these uh, tracks if you wish to now one thing about if the uh, vagabond ever battles another faction and they remove one of their warriors no matter where they were on this allied track then that faction automatically goes into this hostile box and then um, anytime you want to enter a clearing where they have uh, warriors it costs you an extra boot so instead of moving with one boot you would have to move two boots to enter that clearing 
But you do score a victory point anytime you battle somebody you're hostile with. Anytime you remove one of their uh, pieces, you score a victory point. And one other thing, if you ever get a faction into the allied space, then as you can see here, it says you may move in battle with allied warriors. So what that means is if you're in a clearing uh, with an allied warrior and you move, you can take allied warriors with you. And if you're in a uh, clearing where you have uh, allied warriors and you uh, battle another faction there, you can use their um your allied warriors to um give you higher um <laughs> what am i trying to say to give you more like if you rolled a three and you only had two swords well their warrior gives you an additional sword so you would be able to deal you know the total three hits instead of just the two because you only had two swords and when you take when you take hits you can remove um, allied warriors uh, instead of um, damaging your uh, items. However, if you um, remove more warriors than you allied warriors than you damage items, then they become hostile to you. And that pretty much covers the Vagabond. Now there's one other thing we need to talk about. Well, how do you win? Well, the first player to reach 30 points wins. Um, and it's immediate, so as soon as somebody reaches 30 points, they win. There's one other way. There are these dominance cards um, in different suits. But... Um, if you want to play one of these cards, and most of them are the similar, so it says if you have at least 10 points, victory points, then you can play during the daylight and remove your score marker. So then you can no longer win. If you play this, you can no longer win by scoring. So you win the game if you rule three rabbit clearings at the start of your bird song. So if you have if you have one of these uh, dominance cards and you decide to play it, you have at least ten victory points. You decide to play it. So during uh, daylight, you play it into your play area. Remove your score marker from the score track, and then the only way you can win is if you rule three rabbit clearings at the start of your bird song. And there's similar cards for each uh, suit. Now, the only if you if you ever spend one of these cards just for its um, suit and not for the dominance but you know you discard it because you need to discard you know two rabbit cards for some reason or um, anyway if you do that instead of putting it in the regular discard pile you just place it somewhere near the board then later uh, any player that wants to uh, take that card they can discard a uh, matching suit on, on their turn during their daylight phase and so they could discard a rabbit card to then take that card into their hand now for the vagabond um, since he can't rule a clearing he can't play a dominance card like the other players what he can do is this in games of four or more, as a vagabond, you may form a coalition. And so what that does is the vagabond can choose, can form a coalition with the uh, player with the least amount of points. So he takes his, if the vagabond decides to do that, he takes his victory point marker, puts it on the player board of the player with the least amount of points, and then... The only way um, for the Vagabond to win is if that player that he formed the coalition with actually wins the game, then they share a victory. So, I don't know, that <laughs> that doesn't seem like a very good uh, option to go with. But anyway, that is a rule. So that pretty much covers all the rules for um, Root, covers all the factions. So I guess we'll just go through... Uh, a few turns and show you how it works in play and then wrap it up. 
All right, so let's go through a couple of example turns, starting with Marquise de Cat. All right, first we place one wood at each sawmill. He's just got one sawmill right there. All right, now we can take up to three actions. So I think uh, first thing we want to do in a clearing we rule, place a building spending its cost. Um, so I think I'm going to build another sawmill. Um, over here, I rule this, and I can put another building here. Now that costs one wood, which I do have connected here. So I spend that. And since that costs one wood, and I get one victory point. So let me find my marker and give myself a victory point. Alright, um, I forgot. I could have crafted, um, but I didn't do that, so we'll just skip that this turn. Um, I can't build again because I don't have enough wood. I could recruit once per turn, place a warrior at your recruiter. I do have a recruiter right here, so I will place another warrior there. And then I guess I will, um, I could march, so I could take two moves. So I'm going to move uh, this guy down here. All right, that's going to be my three actions. So then I just draw a card. Draw a card, add it to my hand. I still have less than five. I've only got four. And that's the end of my turn. Okay, we're at the Eerie's turn. So the first thing, if your hand is empty, draw a card. My hand is not empty. I've got three cards. So I add one or two cards to the decree. Well, looking where I want to put, <clears throat> if I put one in recruit, I have to recruit in a clearing with a roost. Well, I've only got one clearing with a roost, so I could put this uh, dominance card in there and use it for its suit. Um, but I may want to save that for later. So I think I won't put anything at recruit right now. Uh, move. I, I know I'm going to have to build um, where I have uh, where I rule and don't have a roost, so I need to move to one of these clearings. So um, I'm good there because I've got a a bird card, so that will that's a wild, so I'll be able to move from the rabbit. So um, I've got to place at least one card. So I guess I'll I'll put the I'll spend this dominance card on the recruit. Okay, so if you have no roosts, I do. All right, so now I can craft, but neither of my cards. Um, I don't have any roost in a mouse clearing or in a fox clearing, so I can't really craft any of those. All right, so now I gotta resolve my decree. So first, I've got a recruit in a rabbit clearing because it's a matching clearing with a roost. So uh, I do have a rabbit clearing with a roost, so I recruit one warrior in there. So I'll put him there. Okay, then uh, move from a matching clearing. Remember, you gotta move from from a clearing you rule. Or to a clearing you rule. Well, I do rule this clearing. I'm going to move three. You can move any number of warriors. I'm going to move three warriors into this mouse clearing. And now I rule that. Okay, I don't have a card in battle, so I don't have to worry about doing that. But I do have one in build, so I have to build in a matching clearing. This is wild, so it can be any clearing. Um, that I rule with without a roost. So I rule this clearing. It doesn't have a roost. Um, it's a mouse clearing, but my bird is a wild card. So I get to build a roost in there. And that will score me one victory point. So let me... Okay, so I've gone through my decree. 
And I wasn't actually supposed to score that big victory point till right here, but I've done it already. So now I draw a card. Um, I don't have any of those symbols showing, so I just draw one card. Do that here. <laughs> Another dominance card. Those are coming out too early. Alright, that ends the Eerie's turn, so now we go on to the Woodland Alliance. Alright, well, uh, first thing is Revolt. Um, spend two supporters matching a sim. I don't have any sympathetic clearings yet, so I can't Revolt. I can maybe spread sympathy. Um, so, at the beginning of the game, when you have, or later, if you have no sympathy, you can choose. Uh, any clearing. Um, so let's see what supporters we have. To place our first sympathy, we've got to spend one supporter. These are our supporters. We got some wild, so uh, we got a mouse dominance. Uh, let's just spend a uh, a bird, so that's wild. It will make our discard pile right here. And since it's our first sympathy, we can put it in any clearing. I'm going to put it uh, here. That's kind of central. And again, since we used a, a wild card, it could be any clearing. Now, this can be done any number of times, so now, because we have uh, one sympathy um, to place our next one, it's got to be in a clearing adjacent to that. So we could spend another supporter, uh, another bird, um, to, to be wild, and because our next one still only costs one card, so let's do that. So we'll spend another bird. And we'll place our second sympathy um, here. That's adjacent to a clearing with a sympathy. And uh, this time that scores us one point. And now we're down to one uh, supporter. We could spend that one too to place another sympathy token oh no that's a mouse and we can't do it here because the river is not a path so that's all the spread of sympathy we can do so now we move on to the daylight so the first thing we can do is craft well to craft this item we need a sympathy and a mouse clearing which we do have so let's go ahead and, and craft this so we get a bag um, item and a victory point. So we'll put our victory point up one and we take a bag item from up here and place it in our crafted items and we actually could craft this one also um, because we do have a sympathy and a fox clearing so let's do that. So we'll craft that so we get a victory point and the uh, crossbow item so we'll put that in there and we get another victory point all right let's uh, add our last card to our supporters since we were down to only one card in our supporters um, so we can't train so that's it so we go to evening we don't have any officers so we can't do any of this so um, we can draw one card we don't have any bases so we don't get to draw any of the extras so we don't have any cards in our hand right now so we draw one and that's going to end the woodland alliance turn all right so we'll come to the vagabond first thing he can do is refresh three items plus two per teapot so he could refresh five items but his, he's only got three items and they're already refreshed. So next thing he can do is slip. So he can move to a clearing or forest at no cost. So he, we started him in this forest. Let's just have him move to this clearing right here for his slip. Okay, so now he goes to daylight and he can start taking action. So he's going to explore. So he's going to exhaust this torch. 
and he's going to um, explore a ruin in his clearing. So he's got a ruin here in this clearing where he's at. So we remove that ruin marker. Oops. And now we take this boot item and we put it in our satchel. And that scores us one victory point. Okay, since we know the Woodland Alliance has a peace here, they don't have a warrior, but they do have a peace, so I can aid them. And the reason I want to aid them is because then I can take one of these items they crafted. So, to aid, we can exhaust any uh, item, so we'll just exhaust our sword. And um, then we give them a card matching the clearing we're in. Oh. Well, fiddlesticks. I don't, I don't have a mouse card, so uh, never mind that. So we'll do something a little different. We will spend a boot to move. So we will move from this clearing, this mouse clearing, to this fox clearing. Then we can spend our sword to do the aid action, because that takes any. And we will give... Um, one card to the Woodland Alliance because we they have a piece there and we're in a uh, so we give them they have a piece there so we can give them aid we give them a card of the matching clearing which is a fox and now I can take one of their items so I'm going to take this bag item and actually put it on this track right here and since I spent one card to aid them I can improve my relationship and that gives me a victory point. Now I could aid them again with one card um, to get that uh, crossbow item but it wouldn't move me up on the relationship track because I could only give them one fox card I don't have two so I, I need two to go up on the track again. But, uh, yeah, we'll wait and see maybe next turn before we try to get that item. So what else could we do? We've only got one boot left. Um, so I guess that's, that's all we're going to do there. So let's go on to um, evening. Um, if in report. I don't have any damaged items. Draw a card. I don't have any coins there, so I just get to draw one card into my hand. Oh, and it is a fox. That'll be helpful next turn to aid the Woodland Alliance again. All right, remove items in satchel down to six, plus two per bag, so I could actually have eight, and I've only got four. And that's going to end my turn. All right, we'll do one more turn. All right, we're back to the Marquise de Cat. Place one wood at each sawmill. So he's got two sawmills now. So he'll place one wood at that one and one wood at that one. So now I could craft using workshops. I've only got a workshop in a rabbit clearing and only one, so I can't do this one. So I really can't craft anything. So now I can take up to three actions. So for my first action, I'm going to uh, build a recruiter. So I have to do that in a clearing I rule, which I rule this one. So I'll build that there. And uh, it costs me one wood. And I can trace the wood through clearings I rule back to this piece of wood. And that will get me one victory point. And um, let's just say I want to recruit again, so I can recruit where I have a uh, recruiter. So I'll, I can recruit a guy there. And finally I can do, well, I guess I could build again. So for one wood I could build this workshop. I rule this clearing so I could build it here 
and I can trace it back to my one piece of wood here and that gives me two additional um, victory points and finally I just draw a card and that'll put me at my hand limit of five and that ends the Marquis turn so now we go on to the Erie Dynasty okay so my hand is not empty so I don't need to draw a card I do need to add one or two cards to my decree alright um, let's say we want to add a card a mouse card so we can recruit in our uh, mouse clearing here and uh, I like to maybe battle but I don't have a mouse card where I can battle so I think I'm just gonna put the one card um, for that part okay number three if you have no roosts I do I have two roosts okay so now I could craft using roosts the only card I have to craft is this but it would require me to have roosts in two flop fox clearings and I've only got a roost in a mouse clearing and a rabbit clearing so I can't craft anything okay so now we resolve the decree alright so I got a recruit in a rabbit and in a mouse clearing so I will recruit one warrior there in that mouse clearing and one warrior here and it has to be in a clearing with a roost and of course both of those do okay next is move from a matching clearing it's a wild card so it can be from any clearing I have so I'm gonna move uh, I'm gonna move a guy from here up to here now because of the woodlands power remember their outrage power when a player removes sympathy or moves any warrior into a sympathetic clearing which I just moved my warrior into a sympathetic clearing then that player must add a matching card from their hand to their supporters so I moved into a mouse sympathetic mouse clearing so I should add a mouse card to the Woodlands Alliance supporters but I don't have a mouse card so in that case they get just just get to draw a card and add it to their supporters but back to the Erie that was my move I only do one move since I've only got one card there I don't have a card in the battle so I don't have to do it now I do have to build in a uh, matching clearing which this is a wild card so any clearing but it has to be a clearing I rule without a roost well I do rule this clearing because remember the uh, Erie rules any clearings where they are tied in presence well they're tied with the Marquis because he's got one warrior there and they're tied with the Woodland Alliance because he's just got um, one sympathy token there so I, I um, since we're tied for presence there then I rule so I am allowed to build a roost there and since I've only got one card in the build I only have to build once so I'm done with the decree now I score victory points of the rightmost space on the track so I score two victory points and you'll see I have the icon for drawing another card so I score one two victory points and now I draw one card plus one per of these icons showing so I draw two cards okay add that to my hand and I have a total of four cards now alright that's it for the Erie onto the Woodland Alliance alright well first thing I can do if possible is revolt so I can spend two supporters matching a sympathetic clearing well I've got two sympathetic clearings I do have a mouse sympathetic clearing and if I look at my uh, supporters I have two mice so I will spend those two well, if I can pick them up 
those two mice supporters and that to do a revolt and that allows me um, to remove all enemy pieces here so I remove this Marquis de Cat and this Roost and because that's a building I score one victory point for removing that so I score a point this now goes back on the Erie's uh, track and then I get to place a matching base which is the mouse base so that goes in there and uh, warriors equal to the total number of matching sympathetic clearings where that's the only mouse sympathetic clearing I have so I just get to put one warrior there and um, place a warrior in the officer's box okay next I come to the spread the sympathy <laughs> Span a number of supporters listed on the sympathy track to place a sympathy. So for my next one, I still just have to spend one supporter. And it has to be placed adjacent to a sympathetic clearing. Well, I have the only supporter I have left is a fox card. But I do have a fox clearing that's adjacent to a sympathetic clearing. So I can spend that and place a sympathy token in this clearing and I get a victory point for that now any further sympathy tokens I want to place are going to cost me two supporters and currently I have none left so next uh, go to daylight where I can craft using sympathy uh, this cost uh, sympathy in two rabbits I don't have any sympathy in rabbits this one costs one sympathy in mouse I could craft that but I, I want to put these cards in my supporter so I'm not going to craft I am going to use mobilize uh, twice and add these cards to my supporter stack so I think that's all I can do for daylight so now I go to evening now I do have one officer so I can do one of these actions so I think I'll recruit and place a warrior at a base so my base is here and that's all I can do in that evening phase so now I draw one card plus one per uh, icon showing which I have one for putting my base there so I actually get to draw two cards and that will end the Woodland Alliance turn alright so now we're to the Vagabond so he'll refresh three items plus two for T so he could refresh up to five items but he only needs to refresh three okay then he can slip move to a clearing or forest at no cost I think he's just gonna stay where he is here because he's gonna want to explore that ruin and uh, I think he wants to um, aid the uh, Woodland Alliance here where they have sympathy. Okay, so first thing he's going to do is he'll exhaust his torch to explore. So he will remove this ruin token and he gets another bag. Well, he's already got one of those, but another one's helpful and he does get a victory point for that now uh, we had mentioned the previous turn he wanted to aid with two cards the woodland alliance so he could move up and they have that crossbow he'd like to ha have so um, he's in a fox clearing woodland alliance has a token there so he's going to give them two fox cards into their hand he gets to take this one item they had crafted and because he spent two cards he gets to move them up a box and that gives him two more victory points so one two alright well now he'll spend a boot 
move. So he's going to move from this clearing to this clearing. And then he will spend his last boot to move again. And he'll move from this clearing to this clearing. He wants to come over here because there's another ruin that he'll want to explore probably next turn. Now he could, because he has this crossbow, he could strike and uh, remove a piece in his clearing warrior first so he could remove one of the cat's warriors. But if he does that, then uh, the cat will go to hostile, which may or may not be a problem. But since he has to spend an extra boot to move into hostile clearings and the Mar Marquise de Cat has... Uh, clearings all over the place he he I think he doesn't want to do that quite yet he's in a fox clearing um, so if we look at his quest he does have a fox clearing quest but it requires a teapot and a coin he does have a teapot but he doesn't have the stack of coins so he can't do this quest um, he really can't do any of his quests right now um, and he can't craft because he doesn't have a hammer at this point. So I think that's pretty much all he's going to be able to do. He could, uh, no, he's not in a rabbit clearing, so he can't aid. So that's all he can do. So he gets to draw one card into his hand and um, discard down to five. Well, he's only got two. Remove items in satchel down to six plus two per bag well he's only got five so that's it so that's going to end his turn so uh i think that's what i'm going to go through i showed you pretty much everything i guess just for um i think i kind of showed a battle in my walkthrough but we'll just say for instance uh the birds decided to battle uh here on their turn we'll just show how that looks so if on the birds turn they had a uh, mouse card in the battle then they would battle here and uh, roll the dice. Well, they both got a three. Normally the attacker would get the higher dice and the defender would get the lower dice. But uh, since it's two threes, they both get a three. The, uh, the Erie has four um, guys there, so they actually could do um, three hits. But there's only one enemy, so they would just take out the one. The uh, Marquise de Cat, even though he rolled a three, he can only do one hit because there, he only has one warrior there. So he would remove one of the bird, the eerie warriors, and the eerie um, would just remove the one Marquise de Cat warrior. So I think we walked through that before. That's how battle works. It's not very complicated. So uh, that's all I'm going to do. That's root. You know, with only one real playthrough, I can't give a strong opinion towards anything. You know, toward, you know um, I certainly don't know the good strategies or anything like that. I do think it seems like uh, it's a little, little more difficult to learn um, just because you got to learn how each player plays instead of just learn. You know, since everybody doesn't take the same kind of turn, that makes it a little more difficult to learn. I do think it'll be fun, uh, multiplayer. I'm considering maybe trying to get uh, my wife and daughter to play with me, though they are not gamers, so it may be a little, a little bit uh, too much for them. I mean, they'll play Ticket to Ride and uh, Dixit, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but this, this game, I don't know, may be a little too much for them. I may, I may get them to try it, but anyway, um, I am doing games I got for Christmas. Of course, uh, this is now Christmas Eve, so Christmas is tomorrow. Um, I, as I mentioned, I got this from my Secret Santa, BGZ Secret Santa, so I had it before Christmas. And I may or may not get something, uh, game for Christmas, so I don't know if I'll be doing any other videos on games I got for Christmas, but if I do, uh... I'll do a video. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.